Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. So I like to call this one the Great Aged Rosé Shootout. So I was hanging out at a wine shop, went out to a wine shop, shipped to Central Market, and I was looking at the rosés last year, like last summer, and I noticed that uh, they had two rosés from the same producer two years apart, and then I was looking again, I found a rosé even older from them had a lot of dust on it too so i thought why not why not buy a bunch of rosés like the one that the so the one was the current release which was the uh was the 18 so this was i bought this last summer the summer of 19 and so that was the you know, they basically the current release and then two years older which for some reason was still around i'm not sure how that happened and then and this one from 14, so 14, 16, 18, and I really just want to experiment. Granted, it would have been great if it was the same producer for all three, but I want to experiment with why rosés that are older than like a year or two. So I thought, let's do it. Well, I was going to do the review last year, but I never did it, so it's now almost a year later that I bought it. Not quite. It's probably like nine months after I bought these wines. So they had an extra year of age almost. So let's check it out. So um, so what wines do I have? And I'll just kind of run through them real quick, and then we'll kind of give you some background on these things. So the first two are the 2018 and 2016 Domaine Delaporte Sancerre. Uh, these are 100% Pinot Noir uh, rosés. And then the third one is the Chateau Bonnet 2014. It's a Merlot Cabernet Sauvignon um, rosé from Bordeaux. The Delaportes were $24.99 and the Bonnet was $17.99. So let's talk about the Delaportes real quick first. So it's from the village of Chavignol. Uh, it's about two miles west northwest of Sancerre. And it's, there's also a cheese there I was reading about. There's a cheese called the Croton de Chavignol. Um, Chavignol. Chavignol. And it sounds like a cool cheese, so hopefully I can find it somewhere and, and buy it. But uh, I think it would probably go really great with, with the rosé especially, but it will probably go really great with the with the white Sancerre. The winery itself has been around since the 17th century. It doesn't really specify the year, it just says 17th century. It's owned now by, and I'm pretty sure the first name is actually pronounced Mathieu, because I actually know somebody named Mathieu, who is from the Alsace region, but everyone says Matthew, Delaporte. He's the grandson of Vincent Delaporte. Not sure who that is. Highly doubts the founder because that would have been the 1600s. Yeah, so not sure who, who Vincent is in the whole grand scheme of things other than he was the uh, grandfather of Matthew. The picture of, there's a picture of a person. He's really young. I'm assuming it's Matthew. Um, so my feeling is whoever the founder is is maybe a great grandfather or a great great grandfather but he took over the winery in 2010 the winery has been hand harvested since 2015 so both of these were hand harvested and they converted to organic uh they're converting to organic this year now i don't know if they're getting the certification this year or they're going to start farming organically this year but usually when they say they converted to is usually well i don't know it kind of depends on how how they're going to talk about it but since they're talking about it, I'm assuming that they're going to be certified organic this year, which means they've been planting organic for at least three years. They have 33, 33 hectares, and it's split 75-25 between Sauvignon Blanc and Pinot Noir. They switched to smaller bins in 2018 to prevent um, further oxidation of the juice as it goes to the winery, and they've reduced the use of sulfur since that point. So this will be 
one of the wines. So the 18 will be a wine like that. The 16 will be either older way. Not that it was going to say bad or worse. It's just different. I don't know if it's really going to come through in the wines. Their uh, vines are at least 15 years old that produce the Pinot Noir. They have no maceration after pressing, so they they press it, whatever color comes out from just the natural skin contact, and that's what the color is. And it's six months aging on the leaves. The Chateau Bonnet uh, from 14 is from the village of Grisiac um, in the Altre du Mer region of Bordeaux. The uh, De Reigny, I'm really trying to get these pronunciations right. Uh, family were merchants from uh, Livorno, the founders. They bought the estate, well, they bought the estate in 1560. Over a 30 year period, they consolidated vineyards around the chateau. They kind of traded and bought to really kind of grow it. And in 16, 1653, they were producing 60 hogsheads of wine. Now, hogshead is a really vague unit of measure when it comes to barrels. In Bordeaux, it's somewhere between 225 and 300 liters, but depending on the term and what, what the liquid is, it could be upwards of, I think, like 600 liters and as low as like 200 some odd liters. So it's not a set standard. Uh, throughout the 16th to 18th century, the family's wealth grew, and then in 1744, the estate was sold to uh, Chiles de Fieu, uh, their, their family. They owned it until 1811. They implemented some modernization, at least modernization at the time of the winery. French, French Revolution came, kind of screwed things up. But even though they were a noble family, they actually got to keep the chateau. It wasn't like taken away from them. But they ended up selling it in uh, 1811. And uh, and a couple other families owned the estate during the 1800s. 1897, uh, Leonce uh, de Capet, um, de, sorry, Ray Capet. My, uh, in my ways of like phonetically spelling these things, <laughs> autocorrects it de Capet. It's Ray Capet. Um, Leonce Ray Capet bought it. And uh, by this time, disease had devastated the estate. So, you know, 1897, you've got not just flocks already, you had odium and um, uh, powdery mildew. You know, powdery mildew, odium, because odium is downy mildew. So you had two different mildews and phylloxera had kind of ravaged Europe. We always talk about phylloxera, but pre phylloxera was actually the mildews kind of hit. And then uh, he basically they gave him the opportunity to replant the vineyards. Uh, eventually, he got to 120 hectares. He also upgraded the buildings. In 1953, the current owners, the current family, bought it. So Andre Lurton, uh, he's a grandson actually of uh, Ray Capet. He inherited the estate and buy it. It's now part of the larger Andre Lurton group of seven total estates. So the text sheet that I got from the 2014. Um, is a 50-50 Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot blend, average fine age is 19 years. It says, looks like a combination of hand and mechanical harvesting. On the text sheet, it says, by hand or manual sorting before machine harvest. So, I don't know what the, so it looks like machine harvest, but then they also may, they may, they may <laughs> sort by hand, but that's manual. So it could be just a loss in translation. Uh, stainless, steel for, stainless steel fermentation stays in the tank for four months before bottling. No malolactic is involved. Um, and they say on this one, on the text sheet, maturing potential two to three years. And I'm glad to see it because my my thing is that rosé can age a little bit. Like this is probably past this peak, but we're going to check it out anyway. Why not? Um, this one should be still going strong or at least not strong, but it should be, should be well. I mean, it should be oh, well. I mean, it's really only three ish years, three and a half, not even quite three and a half. So, this should be just fine. And then, of course, this is still, this is still fine. Like, it's only been a year since it came out. All right. So, we're going to pour all three. I'm really excited to check this out. All right, so since I'm recording all these on the same day and, you know, we're like 
kind of a month into the whole, I mean, it's more than a month, but like a month into like a lot of places being like really serious with your stay at home, shelter in place, whatever lockdown version you want to talk to. Um, hopefully you and your family have been safe and nothing bad has happened. And hopefully things are turning around at this point because this is the fourth episode. So this should be a, about a month from now from today's date, which is the uh, 4th of April. I'm just killing time here. All right, let's, let's do that. Grab my virtual call. So I was looking for these today. I bought six of these like, I don't know, several months ago because I have a lot of wines with screw cap. And when I went to Oregon, I couldn't find them. So I only had the two that fit the standard, fit the standard thing. And I brought them, but I had like more than two. And I brought the, the larger ones too, but I have yet to actually use any of the larger ones or the ones for larger or one ones for larger bottles. And uh, so I only used of the, I think I had like four or five screw cap ones I brought to Oregon with me for the exam. I only used two of them because I only had two. It just means it was more wine for me when I got back home. All right. So it's not fair to compare the colors of the three because you're doing, you have two, this is the same grape and the colors are, it's hard to tell, but in general, the colors look fairly the same. I mean, I don't see a huge amount of difference. This is a two year older wine so it's had two years more in bottle, two years more to uh, oxidize, and it's really not there. This is going to be a completely different color because we're talking different grape varieties, but this is more of a copperish color. Um, so, yeah. Let's just put this out of the way. Okay. So I went from youngest to oldest. That was on purpose just because I feel this is going to be richer. When I look in the glass, they all have a very similarity of color because it's got a red background, but there's, there's more oxidative qualities to this as there should be, even though it is a Stelvin enclosure. So um, real quick about Stelvins or crew caps, you can get Stelvins that have varying what they call oxygen transfer rates, OTRs, that can mimic cork. Um, they're not all completely like 100% no oxygen, no, you know, oxygen gets through. You can have those, but you also can have them that they, they, they can oxidize a little bit. All right. <clears throat> so we're just going to nose all three. Okay. So none of them smell bad. So they all, they all, especially this one is fine. So let's just kind of like evaluate. So since these are the same, there's a, on the nose, it's almost no difference to how they smell. So like if you were serving, like if you were like, oh, I only have the 16, but don't want to tell your friend, you don't have anything like newer than 16. On the nose, they're not going to know. If, especially if they like had the 18 versus seven versus 16. On the nose, I don't really, there isn't a hugely detectable difference. I mean, it's still the typical rosé, um, Typical rosé aromas, though, this is more of a cherry-oriented, mainly because it is Pinot Noir, and cherry is usually the, the main aroma, but I also get a little bit of strawberry as I'm getting wine on the... Let's see, what's it? Oops, I actually threw it into lockdown mode on the computer. Okay. And then on this one, there'll be a little more of an oxidized, there's like a little more bruised quality to it. It's actually an earthiness to it. Like a forest floor. And more of a raspberry component as far as the red fruit. All right, let's taste it. Mm. 
Okay, so the comparisons, first of all, I like both these wines, so the excellent quality of these. There is a little difference in flavor on this one. There's a, a hint of a little more oxidation to it, almost like a almost like a brandy quality to it, like a bitterness. But it's super slight. Like again, if you just hand it to somebody, there's literally nothing wrong with this rosé. It tastes just fine. But does this taste fresher? Yes, it does. Is it dramatically fresher? No. But in a side-by-side -side comparison, somebody who drinks enough wine, they can definitely tell the difference. Maybe the average person can't, or maybe they can. There's, it feels the acidity is a little higher in this. The acidity's probably dropped a little bit. So that's why it probably tastes fresher. Now this one, I'm excited to try this one. I hope it, I hope it still tastes good. What, what? Tastes just fine. Now, if you'd had this, if I had the 18 of this, or even if the 19 was out yet, it would definitely taste fresher. There's definitely an aged quality to this. But it's delicious, man. And there's also this waxy component. <clears throat> it's like, it's a kind of like, a um an aged riesling in, in some ways with the uh with the nose and there's even like an aged chardonnay quality on the palate so aged in the sense that there's definitely an oxidative quality to it not quite a nuttiness but there's there's like a, a, a oxidized fruit going on here but it still tastes good. Does would the current release of this probably taste better? Probably. But you know, we're comparing, and, and I guess with rose, it's like, you know, it ages much faster, I'm sure. But a, a 14 rose versus an 18 rose is probably a decent amount of difference versus say a 14 Chardonnay versus an 18 Chardonnay. It probably will be as much of a difference, but you'll probably tell the difference. Is one better than the other? I don't know. What do you like? You know, I like older wines. I like the complexity that, that tends to happen with older wines. The oxidative, oxidative qualities that happen with older wines. The earthiness usually comes up. The fruit that drops, the earthiness comes up. I mean, I had a 2012 just pay doc uh, Pinot Noir. I didn't review it, but I had it over two different uh, two different days tasting it. And... Was it my favorite Pinot Noir? No, it really wasn't. It was good, but it was really earthy and forest floor and poopy. <clears throat> wasn't a lot of fruit to it. It was a 12, so it had seven-ish years of age. But um, I'm sure if I had had it, I'm sure if I had the 17 or the 18 version of it, probably, probably the 18's out on that, it would have been fresher and more fruit forward and not as forest floor and and that type of decayed, decayed earth and, you know, that poopiness. Honestly, I think it's just as Brett is really, is really, which I'm more used to getting Brett from Bordeaux than necessarily Burgundy. And this is not a Burgundy wine, but it was a French wine. So I think it was more of a Bretonomyces thing going on, which I like in certain amounts. This was like at the edge of what I enjoy. I drank it because I'm like, why not? But yeah. All three of these are fine. Now, obviously, you're not going to be able to find these out in the market. But if you want to lay down a rosé, say you want to lay down this particular producer for a couple years, it's going to drink just fine. You're going to get a little more complexity to it, a little more oxidation quality, like oxidative quality to it. It's not going to be that really fresh and bright and acidic. 
but it's still going to have, it still retains some of it. It still retains that freshness to it. I'm telling you, the average person, if I handed them that, they'd be happy with it. Nothing wrong with these wines. I was, I'm happy the outcome came this came out this way because that, that was my point. And I wanted three aged rosé, something with significant age, at least as far as rosé is concerned, something with a little bit more age than normal, and something with a typical age. Again, it's a little bit longer. I mean, there aren't a lot of 19s out in the market yet. They're, they do exist. It's the 18s are still going to be predominantly out there, which is totally cool because you've had a, an extra year of age on that. Absolutely grab them. Pick them up. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. Click the links above to friend me up. Click the links below. I'll have the links below for the websites, for the wineries, and, uh, of course, the PayPal links down there. We'll throw some ducks my way. And we'll see everyone again next time.